your Locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 617 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. That song you're hearing right now is, of course, Leave the Lights On from our good friends in Pacifier. You can check those guys out anywhere you get your music. And today we're going to be talking quite a bit, in fact, pretty much exclusively about the Ranger exit interviews, which occurred on Monday. If you guys happen to miss it, basically the entire team was made available to the media, as was head coach Gerard Gallant. And it was just kind of interesting to, you know, hear players try to put the entire season, the entire postseason run into perspective and even start looking ahead to next season already. And I think a lot of us have probably begun to do that as well. Uh, Hopefully everybody out there is doing well, Ranger fans, and, you know, sort of reacclimating to life without the Rangers in the playoffs, because I don't know about you guys. I mean, obviously, listen, we've all got our lives to live, and we've all got things to do, but anytime the Rangers are in the playoffs, that's never too far away from the forefront of my mind, especially when you get past the first round, you get past the second round, you're in the Eastern Conference Final, and you have a chance to potentially win a Stanley Cup. That's always going to be on your mind at least a little bit, and it's crazy because, You know, I think it really hit me on Sunday as far as, you know, just kind of really sticking in that uh, this incredible run that the Rangers had is now over. And I think the reason that that happened is because Game 7 was set for Tuesday night, which is actually tonight as I'm recording this, if, you know, the Rangers and Lightning had gone all the way to Game 7. And on Sunday, I just remember thinking like, man, you know, if we could have just won one out of four games, we'd all be getting geared up and hyped and excited for a Game 7 at Madison Square Garden. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Uh, cold hard fact, though, of, you know, the NHL and, and really sports in general, all but one team is going to be disappointed at the end of the season, at least on some level. And if you're talking about the NHL, 31 of 32 teams going to be disappointed at the end of the year. Uh, unfortunately, the Rangers are one of those teams. But again, it was an outstanding season overall, uh, tremendously fun running the playoffs. And I think it gets Ranger fans really, really excited looking forward to next season. And as far as exit interview day is concerned, you know, for the Rangers, whatever you want to call it, one of the things that kind of stood out to me from you know, listening to all these players and listening to Gallant uh, speak yesterday was just how many impending unrestricted free free agents, excuse me, uh, voiced their desire to return to the New York Rangers next season. Now, on one hand, obviously, this was a really nice run for the Rangers and all these guys that came over at or near the trade deadline had a pretty big role in that. And I'm sure they had a lot of fun helping this team make it as far as they did. And Obviously, you know, Ranger fans really seem to embrace the new guys and really kind of take to them pretty quickly. So I would expect players to say that. I mean, I don't think impending free agents are going to say something about how, you know, uh, well, it was okay here. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. No, they're all going to put over uh, their time with the Rangers and talk about how they enjoyed it. And that's what all these guys did. And the phrase and the theme that kept coming up over and over again, if you listen to these players talk during exit interview day, I suppose that's what we can call it, is unfinished business. That's what everybody kept talking about. Nearly every impending UFA, you know, because obviously all these reporters are going to ask them, how did you enjoy your time here? Do you think you could be back with the Rangers? You know, would you sign here over other places? Do you think the Rangers are interested in bringing you back? How did you like your teammates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And It's just great to hear so many players express their interest in remaining with this New York Ranger team uh, as more than just a rental. Now, of course, that's not going to happen for every single one of them. Not every single one of these guys are going to be back with the Rangers next season, and that's kind of difficult as well. I would love to have seen this particular group of Rangers win a Stanley Cup because, as we discussed, it is such a likable bunch of players and one of the most uh, you know fun to root for teams that I think the Rangers have ever had, at least in my uh, fandom. So. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens here, but it's just so nice to hear so many players talk about unfinished vi- business. Uh, Frank Vetrano was one of those players. We'll kind of just go through what the impending UFAs had to say, because again, I thought that was one of the things that really stood out, just this theme of players that you know could be on their way to another team or could re-sign with the Rangers, all expressing interest in remaining in New York and all expressing their belief that they have some 
unfinished business. That term came up more times than I could possibly count, both among impending UFAs and Rangers who, you know, are under contract for the long haul here. But Frank Vetrano, I mean, this is what he had to say about it. I think I have some unfinished business here. I want to help this team win a Stanley Cup. The fans and everything here is world class, and it's been great to be a part of. And, you know, it's one thing to read this quote in an article, and I'm sure a lot of you guys read a lot of the outstanding Ranger beat writers and the things that they put out, and they do a fantastic job. But if you get the chance, do more than just read the article. Go and seek out these exit interview videos because, you know, again, it's one thing to just read the quote. But when you look at Vetrano here and you kind of see the look in his eyes, you see his body language, you hear the tone of his voice, you get the sense that he really, really means that. He wants to remain a New York Ranger. And when they initially brought him in, as was the case for a lot of these impending UFAs, I think the general consensus consensus and the general belief is that he'd probably probably be on his way after the season is over. And just for some context, Vetrano is wrapping up a three-year deal that paid him a total of $7.6 million. That's an average annual value of $2.533 million. I would imagine he'd probably get a little bit of a raise there. Is he in the Rangers' price range? It's possible. And again, we've talked about this before. It has a lot to do with uh, the other impending UFAs that the Rangers have. What happens with one player affects the other. You know, take like Ryan Stroman and Andrew Kopp, for, for instance, because I think they're the two that are kind of the most high-profile New York Ranger impending UFAs. And I don't think there's any chance that both of them are brought back. But if the Rangers decide to move on from Ryan Strom, that then increases uh, the chances of Andrew Kopp being brought back. If the Rangers uh, decide that they want to keep Strom and they're able to hammer out some kind of a deal at the zero hour here, either before unrestricted free agency or after it starts, then that obviously pretty much sends Andrew Kopp to some other team around this league. So it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, free agent class to watch, that is for sure. Uh, my hope is that the Rangers can keep most of this team together as much as they possibly can, you know, assuming that it doesn't also include them reaching for players and overpaying players and overextending themselves and uh, then not having enough money to pay guys like Alexi Lafreniere, Philip Hedl, Capo Caco, Keandre Miller, a couple others as well. Uh, but we'll see how this all shakes out. Uh, I mentioned Ryan Strom a second ago. This is what he had to say about it. He was emotional during his uh, presser. Several Rangers were. Chris Kreider was for sure. Uh, Mika Zibanejad. Uh, but Ryan Strom, this is what he had to say. My heart is here. I love these guys. This team is destined for great things. My first choice is still to be a New York Ranger. I can't predict the future. All I know is I love these guys, and I think we have some unfinished business. And there's that term again. Uh, this team is destined for great things in the future. And then Strom, he also kind of joked that his longest contract in the NHL was actually his entry-level deal, and he's hoping that his next one is a little bit longer than that. Uh, and he thinks that he's given the Rangers the impression that he wants to be here. And again, we'll see how this shakes out. I think the Rangers, you know, they've at times throughout this past season, you know, they, they talk with Strom, then talks kind of die down. They talk with him, talks die down. They have interest in keeping him. That's the general consensus that I've gathered. They have interest in keeping him, but they have a firm price and they're not going to go above it. And I think five and a half million is right around uh, their their ceiling as, as it pertains to Ryan Strom. And if he wants to go out and test the unrestricted free agent market and he thinks he can do better for himself, I would never begrudge a player for that because, you know, this is a business. We hear it all day every, I mean, not all day every day, but you get the idea. We hear it a lot. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a two-way street because obviously it's a business for the people that own these teams. It's also a business for the players. And a lot of these players, they want to make as much money as they possibly can while they're fortunate enough to be able to play the game that they love for a living. And so if Strom or anybody else wants to go to the highest bidder, I have no issues with that. I mean, it'd be nice if some of these guys would take a hometown discount. Maybe Ryan Strom will. Maybe Vetrano will. Maybe somebody like Andrew Kopp would think about it as well. You never know for sure what these guys are thinking and how it's going to shake out. But again, if someone wants to get paid as much as they possibly can. I have no issues with that. My gut feeling is that Ryan Strom probably walks. I just feel like if the extension was going to happen and a deal was going to get done, that it probably would have happened by now. And with Ryan Strom, if you look at it from his perspective, with him being this close to unrestricted free agency and being able to talk to all 32 teams in the league as opposed to just the Rangers, I don't see him signing any kind of an extension with the Rangers before unrestricted free agency begins. I don't think he's going to sign one at all. I think he ends up probably playing somewhere else next season. But he's going to at least, you know, test the waters and go into unrestricted free agency and see what he can get for himself. And uh, for what it's worth, this is what Artemi Panarin had to say about Ryan Strom. Those two are really close, and obviously they've been line mates for the better part of uh, these last three seasons here. But this is what Panarin had to say. He's a big part of my life. I can speak to him about big things, my thoughts. He means everything. 
And just another example, once again, of how close this team is. You know, there's a lot of, it just seems like a very tight-knit bunch. I mean, you guys don't need me to tell you that. Just watch them interact with each other throughout the entire season, throughout the playoffs, the things that they say about each other, you know, during press conferences. Very, very close locker room. And, um, you know, I would advise the Rangers to do what they can to bring back at least a few of these unrestricted free agents because they've develop something special in that locker room. And if the entire team looks different next year, who's to say that that same spark, that same chemistry, that same camaraderie is going to be there. So again, we'll see how this whole thing shakes out here. Um, but uh, we got some other unrestricted free agent New York Rangers to talk about and what they had to say at the end of the season here. We'll get to all that, as well as some comments from Gerard Gallant and his uh, you know, rationale behind scratching Capo Caco for the last game of the season. We will get to all that stuff in just a second. But first, I just want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Built Bar. You know how our friends at Built are always coming out with amazing new flavors? Well, this time, Built has truly outdone themselves with their new Mud Pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new Mud Pie flavor in both Mud Pie Bar and Mud Pie Puff. Not sure what Mud Pie tastes like? If you're a chocolate fan, you better sit down for this. The new Mud Pie Bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. You've got to try Mud Pie as soon as possible, and you need to hurry because the Mud Pie Bar and Mud Pie Puff are only available for a limited time. Visit Built.com to taste the deliciousness for yourself. Like all Built Bars, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. You are going to love the new Mud Pie Built Bar and Built Puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and we have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey. Thanks for your help. All right, so going over a couple more comments from some impending New York Ranger unrestricted free agents. And to be sure, you know, right now we're kind of just glossing over it and just kind of, uh, you know, turning our attention to what they said at their exit interviews here. But at some point, we're going to do some deep dives on all these New York Ranger free agents, unrestricted or restricted, and just kind of talk about you know what they bring to the table, what kind of a contract they could be looking at, if the Rangers should uh, look to hang on to them, or in the cases of some restricted free agents, maybe even look to trade one or two of them. I think Alex Georgia's name definitely comes to mind there. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're going to be breaking this all down in, in much greater detail. Like I said, doing some deep dives into all of these unrestricted New York Ranger free agents. Right now, we're kind of just scratching the surface. And again, just kind of putting the spotlight at everything that was said uh, during the exit interviews and just talking about, you know, what this could mean for their future. And we already talked about Vitrano and Strom, obviously. Andrew Kopp, another unrestricted uh, free agent for the New York Rangers. And he made everybody laugh when he was uh, talking about his time with the Rangers and, uh, you know, his impending unrestricted free agency period here. But this is what he had to say about that. Since the trade deadline, I told my agent, go kick rocks. I definitely did enjoy my time here. And uh, that made everybody laugh, like I said. And uh, apparently, you know, Cop, he went on to say something along the lines of, you know, that he told his agent, I don't want to talk to you for a while. In other words, basically, he was focused on being a New York Ranger, doing everything that he could to help this team go on a playoff run and perhaps even win uh, the Stanley Cup. He also mentioned that it's hard to talk about free agency right now because he said the wounds are still so fresh. And I can certainly appreciate that and certainly buy that. I mean, look, they did this just two days after they were eliminated. It's probably still sinking in that their season is over. I mean, these guys, for however long now, however many weeks it was, had basically been playing hockey every other night. I mean, there was a stretch uh, to end the season when you count the postseason 
it was 20 games in just 40 days. So I'm sure, you know, he, the dust is still kind of settling for all these guys. And uh, obviously, unrestricted free agent is still a little ways away here. So I would imagine that, yeah, they, a lot of these guys probably haven't had a whole lot of time to think about it all that deeply. But this is something else that Andrew Kopp had to say during his exit interview here. It definitely feels like there's unfinished business. And I definitely like the group and the direction that this team is going. And again, you know, I mentioned this a second ago when we were talking about Vetrano and Strom. This is, in some ways, just player talk, right? You know, you conclude your season with a team like the New York Rangers that makes it all the way to the Eastern Conference Final. You get within two wins of making it to the Stanley Cup Final. Obviously, you're going to speak pretty highly about, you know, the culture, your teammates, the city, the fans, the organization. That kind of just comes with the territory. And maybe I'm a little bit naive here, but when I, again, and I encourage everybody to watch the videos. Don't just read the quotes. Go watch the videos. When I see the looks on these players' faces, when I, you know, kind of hear the tone of their voice, when I see their facial expressions, when I see the look in their eyes, I really tend to buy it. I believe that Andrew Kopp, everything else being equal, if he was in a situation where he knew what his next contract was going to be, he knew exactly how many years it was going to be, exactly how much money it was going to be, and you told him, you can have this contract for this amount of years and this amount of money, and you can play for any team in the NHL, I think he would pick the New York Rangers. And again, maybe I'm a little bit naive. Maybe I'm a little bit Ranger biased. I think Andrew Kopp truly wants to be back with this team next season. And given the fact that the Rangers are going to need a second line center, and given the fact that they've really struggled to come up with, uh, you know, meet in the middle when it comes to Ryan Strom, I think there's a decent chance that Andrew Kopp does return to this team. I don't think it's a slam dunk the way that certain Ranger fans seem to believe that it is. You know, According to Harrison from Locked On Winnipeg Jets, we did the crossover with him after the trade, the Rangers trade with the Jets for Andrew Kopp was completed, and he mentioned that Kopp turned down a four-year deal. It was believed to be a four-year deal in the range of about $5 million per season, and so you know, that's not cheap, and it's kind of approaching the number that the Rangers kind of self-impose themselves when it comes to Ryan Strom, that being $5.5 million per season. So for everybody that thinks that, you know, Andrew Kopp, him coming back as a layup, or that he's going to be a cheaper and better alternative to Ryan Strom, I'm not so sure that that's the case. I, I feel like there's a slightly better than 50-50 chance that Andrew Kopp remains with the New York Rangers next season, but it is far from a layup, especially when you consider that some of the players we already mentioned— Miller, Lafreniere, Kako, Hedl, all these guys are eventually going to have to be paid by this team. Uh, we'll see how this whole thing shakes out, but I don't think it's going to be cheap to re-sign Andrew Kopp. Hopefully, you know, again, if everything else being equal, if Andrew Kopp has very similar offers from around the league that the Rangers are giving to him, then hopefully he picks the Rangers. But I'll tell you one person who's not going to make it easy for Andrew Kopp to leave. That is Jacob Truba. Truba has been friends with Andrew Kopp and also Frank Vetrano for a very, very long time. Truba and Kopp have known each other since they were kids. And apparently, you know, Kopp shared this story as well. Truba told Kopp in the hallway during exit interview day here, that had better not be our last game together. And so... At least one guy, Jacob Truba, you know, he's going to do a little bit of recruiting. He's going to do a little bit of encouraging. Hey, listen, Jacob Truba, just follow Andrew Kopp around the entire offseason and uh, make sure that he only signs a contract with the New York Rangers. I, I think as long as, you know, the, the price is somewhat reasonable, there's a decent chance that Andrew Kopp remains with the Rangers. And again, I, I completely buy that he enjoyed his time here. And obviously, he's got one really close friend on the team. So we'll see how this whole thing shakes out. But again, very nice to hear Andrew Kopp talk about unfinished business and talk about, you know, how much it meant to him to be a New York Ranger and how important this run was for him and how special he thought it was and all that good stuff. You, you just hope that uh, it comes to fruition and he ends up staying a New York Ranger. Or maybe not. There might be some people listening that think he'll be too expensive and you'd like the Rangers to let him walk. Um, we'll, we'll see how the whole thing shakes out. But again, it just is really nice to hear all these players speak so highly of their time in New York and make it seem pretty clear that they want to be back with this team. We had Tyler Mott speaking to the media as well. He mentioned kind of letting everything just digest a bit. And again, I completely buy that. You know, your, your head is probably spinning if you're a player on this New York Ranger team and you, know, you go right from uh, the Eastern Conference Final to having to turn the page very quickly and uh, kind of look at your future if you're an unrestricted free agent, as Tyler Mott is. But this is what he had to say about it. I enjoyed being here for sure. It's a great organization. And he also mentioned, you know, moving uh, to the area with his fiance and how they both really like the area. I will say Tyler Mott, I thought, you know, watching the video here, he played it a little bit more coy than some of the other impending UFAs. And 
Maybe part of the reason for that is he may not want the Rangers to think that they can have him for pennies on the dollar. You know, he's kind of thinking about the business end of this because Tyler Mott has never really been paid all that highly in the NHL. I mean, if you're in the NHL, you're making a good salary and a good living for yourself. But relatively speaking, you know, compared to some of the other players around the league, he's not really making that much. He's coming off a deal that paid him $2.45 million over two years. So $1.225 million per season. And it's interesting because I think with Mott, he might have as good of a chance as any of the impending UFAs of being back with the New York Rangers for that very reason. I don't know that he's really going to break the bank. I think certainly he'll get a little bit of a raise on $1.225 million per season. But if you could have Mott for like, I don't know, $2 million per year for a couple of years, I see no reason not to do that. Uh, he had a strong impact on the fourth line, just made it a little bit more dynamic throughout the time that he was here in the regular season and certainly the playoffs as well. And somebody that just... Brings a lot of energy to the table. Great penalty killer. Um, plays every shift like it's his last. And somebody that, you know, I think the Rangers would uh, certainly be wise to talk to and do their due diligence and really give strong consideration to potentially bring him back. Of course, the, the money has to be right. You can't be paying, you know, five and a half million dollars per year to Tyler Mott. But if the money's right, then I, I see no reason why you wouldn't want this guy back in the fold if you're the New York Rangers. And then another impending UFA, that would be Kevin Rooney. He's actually been here for the last two seasons, and he said during yesterday's exit interviews, if the opportunity is there, I would love to be back here in New York. And I will say with Rooney, my gut kind of tells me that he walks. I just get the feeling that you know the Rangers will look to go a different way root when it comes to filling out the fourth line. I'm not necessarily looking to push Kevin Rooney out the door. Uh, you know, he's a hardworking player and very good on the penalty kill, but that's just it. His chief asset to the New York Rangers is his ability to kill penalties. And that was more valuable to the Rangers, I would say, last year than it was this year, simply because at this point now, you know, the Rangers have a lot of very established, very strong penalty killers on this team. You know, Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider, they didn't really start killing penalties, at least not with any regularity, before last season. Now you've also got Barclay Goodrow in the mix. You've got Tyler Mott potentially coming back. You've got Andrew Kopp maybe coming back. So, uh... The need for Rooney lessens a little bit if you're the Rangers, but again, if you feel like the years and dollars are right, and you know, for some reference, he's coming off a two-year deal that paid him a total of just $1.5 million uh, total, so that's an average annual value of 750 k and the Rangers, if you remember, they actually protected him from Seattle in the expansion draft last offseason, so they clearly value him to some extent. Just kind of a gut feeling. I, I think he ends up somewhere else next season, but once again, if the dollars and the years are reasonable and you're not going to cost yourself in the long run, you're not going to be able to, or you're not going to miss out on the chance to re-sign somebody like Keandre Miller, then I, I think by all means, you bring Kevin Rooney back on a one or two year deal for uh, fairly cheap. I see no issues with that either. But we're getting to some of Gerard Gallant's comments in just a second, including uh, his rationale behind uh, scratching Capo Caco in game six against the Lightning, which of course turned out to be the last game of the season for the New York Rangers. And we will do that in just a second. All right, so Gerard Gallant at the exit interview here. He obviously answered a wide range of questions, and I think first and foremost, the thing that is most prominently on the minds of most New York Ranger fans was his decision to make Capo Caco a healthy scratch in Game 6, despite the fact that Ryan Strom was injured and was ultimately unable to finish that game, despite the fact that Kevin Rooney and Dryden Hunt were both put in the lineup over Capo Caco. And I will say, you know, a little bit later in the offseason here, probably a little bit later this week, we're going to do an episode where we talk about this Capo Caco situation from every conceivable angle, from top to bottom. The decision itself to scratch him, if this decision could have long-term ramifications as far as the relationship between Caco and the Rangers, uh, the possibility of an offer sheet for Capo Caco, uh, where does he fit into the Rangers' plans going forward, and like I said, we will save most of that stuff for later this week. Uh, I already talked in our last episode, so you can check that out if you missed it. But in our last episode, I did talk about the controversial decision to scratch Capo Caco and explained why I did not agree with the decision, like, at all. Um, I think Gerard Gallant is a fantastic coach. I've said that over and over again. Thought he should have won Coach of the Year, but I just could not get on board with that decision. And as far as Gallant's explanation for scratching Capo Caco... There really wasn't much of one. He kept it pretty close to the vest, kept it kind of vague, but this is what he had to say during the exit interviews. Trying to win a hockey game, we love the kid, but we thought the best lineup was trying to win that game. 
And again, that was during the exit interviews. After Game 6, you know, his post-game presser after Game 6, he basically just said, I'm not going to talk about it. Tonight's not the time. And uh, he also mentioned that he did not feel the need to have a conversation with Capo Caco about the scratching. But he also mentioned during his exit interview that he definitely 100% sees Capo Caco and Alexi Lafreniere as top six players going forward. And we'll see. We don't know how uh, this free agency class is going to shake out. The Rangers could lose some guys that were part of the top six. I mean, if you look at the way the Rangers ended the season, three of their top six forwards are impending UFAs, Vetrano, Strom, and Kopp. So if some or all of those guys are gone, then Katko and Lafreniere are going to have no choice. They're going to have to step into those roles as top six players for the New York Rangers. But like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about impending uh, unrestricted free agency at a later date. As far as Capo Kako and what he had to say during his exit interview, this is what he had to say. I'm going to show I'm better than that. You should put me in the lineup. I'm a good player. And he also added that he's never been scratched in his life, but that it won't affect his decision of, you know, how much he wants to be a New York Ranger. And on one hand, maybe this is the best thing that ever happens to Capo Caco. Maybe this kind of just lights a fire under him during the offseason. Maybe he comes back and uh, we don't even recognize him. And, and first of all, let me say, I do think Capo Caco, through his three years in this league, has gradually gotten better every single season. I think a lot of us were probably expecting a little bit more out of him by now. And certainly I don't think that, you know, the playoffs specifically Game 6 of the Eastern Conference Final, is a good time to send a message to somebody by making them a healthy scratch. And I don't think that's why Gallant did it. I think he truly believed that going with the lap that he went with was going to give the Rangers the best chance to win. I respectfully disagree with that, but I think that's what it was more so than like anything personal or anything disciplinarian or anything like that. You know, with stories like these, you're always kind of waiting for, you know, that extra wrinkle to the story or that thing that we don't really know about. I think this was really just a hockey decision and Gallant truly believed that the Rangers were better off going with guys like Kevin Rooney and Dryden Hunt and an injured Ryan Strom over Capo Caco. Like I said, I respectfully disagree, but I don't think there was anything more to the decision than that. So uh, that's pretty much where things stand. And like I said, maybe this does light a fire under Capo Caco. Maybe he comes back next season and he becomes a superstar that we were all hoping he would be. Uh, there's a lot of different ways this thing could play out. We'll see what happens. And like I said, we will be discussing the Capo Caco situation in a future episode. We will probably spend an entire episode on this entire thing. Everything from the initial decision to scratch Caco, once again, to everything that uh, has happened since and could potentially happen in the future and just kind of discuss what his role with this New York Ranger team will be going forward. Gallant was also asked about the possibility of naming a captain. We're not sure if obviously the Rangers are ever going to name a captain at this point. And there's a lot of candidates. I think a lot more candidates emerged uh, throughout this season and throughout this postseason. Again, that's another topic we could spend an entire episode on and likely will spend an entire episode on at some point uh, this offseason. So again, if you're a new listener to Lockdown New York Rangers or you're not such a new listener, but uh, well, it's the offseason, don't think for a second that we're slowing down here. We're going to keep talking about everything having to do with the New York Rangers and uh, just discussing it from every conceivable angle. We're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, it's always great, once again, talking New York Ranger hockey with you guys and uh, just... Uh, being engaged in everything New York Rangers, 365 days a year. That's what we do here on Locked on New York Rangers. And again, uh, if you're somebody that's been listening forever, thank you so much and definitely stick around. And if you're new and you just jumped in during the playoffs, definitely stick around as well. Like I said, we're going to have a lot of fun here uh, throughout this entire offseason, despite the uh, the unfortunate ending the other night in Tampa Bay. But this is what Gallant said as far as the potential of the Rangers naming a captain going into next season. And he actually was kind of funny about it when he was first asked because he mentioned that if the Rangers, you know, had won the series against Tampa Bay, he said we would have had at least one or two guys going over there to get that trophy. And that's something that I actually talked about too on this podcast. You know, when the Rangers went into the season and they still didn't have a captain, I kind of just openly wondered, like, imagine the Rangers go on some crazy run and they win the Stanley Cup, which actually came closer to happening than I think a lot of us anticipated that it would. Uh, but imagine, you know, they actually won the Stanley Cup this year and Gary Bettman's out there. What do you do? Alternate captain Chris Kreider come and get the Stanley Cup? That just doesn't have the same ring to it as when he says, you know, Captain Mark Messier come and get the Stanley Cup. You know, alternate captain Barclay Goodrow come and get the Stanley Cup. Alternate captain Ryan Strom come and get the Stanley Cup. You know, it just it doesn't quite have the same ring to it that uh, that captain does. Or, or maybe he he addresses all six New York Ranger alternate captains and he. he 
ask them all to come over and get the trophy together. Uh, who knows what would have happened there? Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, he, Gallant also mentioned that uh, he and his coaching staff and the ownership are going to talk about the possibility of naming a captain and who that captain might ultimately end up being. But uh, judging by his comments here, I don't get the sense that he feels like they need to name a captain. And again, we will spend an entire episode on this very topic uh, in the coming days and weeks here. Right now, kind of just uh, touching on a little bit of everything that Gallant mentioned during his exit interview here. But I'll leave you with one more quote from Gerard Gallant. It kind of sums up how I feel, and I hope the way a lot of other Ranger fans feel as well. I, I know there's always some disappointment, and could the Rangers have played better in the Eastern Conference Final? They could have. But again, I think this is a really strong season for this team and something that's going to uh, help them in the future, this lengthy playoff run that they had this season. And this is what Gallant said when he was asked if it was a successful season for the New York Rangers. 100%. Did I want to win my first Stanley Cup? I sure did. A lot of players down there did too, but I'm real happy. I'm leaving here, going home, and I'm proud of our season. And yeah, he said 100% without hesitating for two seconds. I mean, he immediately said that, and I totally agree. This was absolutely a successful season, and you just hope that this is something that the Rangers can build upon as soon as next year because uh, that championship window... Oh yeah, it's open again. It, it was closed for a while there. Obviously, the Rangers had some growing pains, had to go through the rebuild, had to trade away a lot of uh, really popular players and basically just build everything from scratch. But they've done that now and they're right back in the mix. And, you know, are they going to be the favorites to win the Stanley Cup next season? I really doubt it, but I think they'll probably be considered, you know, one of the top five teams in the league or, you know, somewhere around there. I, I would think they would have to be at this point. So, yeah. Can't wait for next season already. You know, it just ended a couple days ago, but definitely looking forward to seeing what this Ranger team can do and how they can build on uh, what was, again, an excellent season. And on a personal note, one of my absolute favorites as a fan of the New York Rangers. And I hope you guys feel the same way. I hope you were able, despite the tough finish, to at least, you know, get some joy and get some happiness out of what this team did this season. Because for me, and I hope for you guys as well, it's a really special run for this team, making it all the way to the Eastern Conference Final, despite having no shortage of doubters and disrespect and people just not taking this team seriously. Well, I think at this point, you got no choice but to take the New York Rangers seriously. We'll see. Um, but that will pretty much do it for today, guys. I think we're going to actually uh, have a part two of this episode as far as the exit interviews are concerned. You know, there's it's a long off season, and there's so many different things I want to be able to talk about, but we might as well spend our time on these things because obviously there aren't going to be any New York Ranger games for a while, so that kind of opens up my schedule. And again, uh, if you've been listening to this team, or listening to this podcast, excuse me, for any amount of time, or you're kind of new in the playoffs, cannot possibly thank you enough, first of all, and cannot possibly encourage you enough to stick around because, like I said, we're going to have a blast covering this team in the postseason. Got a lot of uh, really exciting ideas and looking to line up some some cool guests for you guys as well. So uh, that will pretty much do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts.